You're still cheering for the Mets? Oh my God. I know it's it just comes with the territory. <laughs> hey, that builds strength and, the, and character and it's, to be a Mets yeah. fan. <laughs> and it's the uh, Subway Series, but right, they're, they're like five down of a four hundred of a five hundred ball club, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the they thing don't is, usually disappoint down. us until at least August, right? Yeah, that's yeah. What's surprising to me. Get the discipline out of the way early. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, yeah, it is the uh, Subway Series. So they're playing the Yankees, but because of the rain, I guess. Tonight. It's like, you know, but yeah. So you we're all sitting here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks for picking a night when it's uh, raining to uh, have a community board meeting. And <laughs> not, when it, not when it's sunny and there's a baseball game. I know. Yeah. Benefits of virtual. <laughs> It's not actually raining. The weather report was way overblown from what I've seen. Well, it's I've been, raining. I've been all, yeah, I've been out all day. It's it's, uh, it's, it's raining right this minute, yeah. right here anyway. I just ran in from outside and it was already, it was heavy drizzle. It's not full it, on. But it's heavy drizzle. It definitely rained. I was trying to make it home and got soaked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we're ready whenever you are. Are we live slash streaming? Yep. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the June 14th, 2023 full board meeting of Manhattan Community Board 6. My name is Kyle Athide, and I'm the chair of CB6. This meeting is called to order at 7.03 p.m., and tonight we are joined by Secretary Steve O, District Manager Jesus Perez, Assistant District Manager Brendan Berth, and Community Coordinator Brian Lafferty. As a reminder to all, New York state law now requires that all community board members have need to have their cameras on and their first and last names displayed from the time the meeting is called to order until the time the meeting is adjourned. If your camera is not on and your name not properly displayed, you cannot count towards quorum. To conduct an efficient meeting tonight, let's observe a few ground rules. The first is that no one may speak until granted the floor. Please first raise your hand through Zoom and wait for the chair to recognize you. Then you can unmute and make your motion or comment. Next, the chat function should not be used for CB6 business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. The chat should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you are having or to state in writing information, such as an email address or link that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. And to the members of the public, if you wish to give remarks during the public session tonight and have not already registered by filling out the form on the CB6 website ahead of time, you can register to speak in the public session by using the Q&A feature of Zoom and posting your name, affiliation, and the specific topic you wish to speak about. This needs to be completed by 7.15 p.m. The agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office, was posted online, and appears on the screen before you. If there is no objection, we will adopt the agenda as stated. So board members, if you object to adopting the agenda, please raise your hand through Zoom. And we'll get the agenda displayed before I move on. This will on. Letty, is your raised hand for objection? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can we scroll through the agenda, please? And if we can make it full screen, that'd be helpful because we're seeing it in the uh, PowerPoint mode. Perfect, thank you. All 
All right, so no objections. The agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. We will now move to attendance by roll call. And just before we begin that, I do want to welcome our new community board members. This is their first meeting tonight as official board members. So welcome, as your name is called. Um, if you could just introduce yourself very quickly um, and maybe give a fun fact or something that, um, you know, to put you on the spot, obviously, <laughs> that you can share with the rest of the group. Um, and if you don't have any, no pressure, you can, you can just move along. But uh, yeah. Let's let's start with a roll call. Okay, we will start attendance by roll call. Board members, you can unmute yourselves and answer present when your name is called. Majed Abdul Samad. Present. Jo Josias Apu. Palathide. Present. Neil Barclay. Present. Martin Barrett. Present. Ellie Barroso. Present. Claire Breton. Present. Jim Collins. Present. Jonathan Derrico. Present. Stu Desser. Present. Michael Devereaux. Present. Beatrice Disman. He is not with us tonight. Jason Fromwitz. He is not with us tonight. Eric Goldberg. Gerald Jones. Paige Judge. Rupal Kakad. Present. John Keller. Present. Nadine Kalani. He might be late. Okay. Abigail Cruzmark. Present. Sandra Leftoff. Sandra Leftoff. Jason Lipman. Present. <laughs> David Lowenstein. Present. Anton Molnar. Present. Sandra McKee. Present. Richard Bintz. Present. Rajesh Nayar. He's not joining us tonight. Okay. Kevin O'Keefe. Present. Rashma Patel. Thought I saw her. Yeah, no, present. I apologize. I had it unmuted. Um, I also just wanted to, one of the new members, um, her name wasn't pronounced properly. It's Rupal Kakkad. Rupal Kakkad. So, okay, so when would you do the final call at the end? Uh, uh, I'm fine with the pronunciation, the way he pronounced it. I actually go by Rupal Kakkad generally anyway. So, yeah. And there's your interesting fact. I'll try to be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for the correction. Uh, Stephen Perez. Present. Miriam Roof. Ralph. Roof. <laughs> Roof. Present. Uh, new CV6 member. Hi, everyone. Uh, excited to work with you all. Uh, fun fact I got my haircut today, and there's a good chance if you ever see me on Second Avenue, it's not going to look like this because it's curlier than usual. <laughs> so, depending on the day, my curls are very, very different. Nice to meet you all. Welcome. Matt Roberts. Present. Roberto Ruiz Melendez. He cannot join us tonight. Larry Shire. Present. Ann Seligman. Present. Sandra Sherrod. Present. Livia Shrednick. Present. Um, and I'm a new member too. So hi everyone. And my fun fact is um, I guess that I'm a student at Friends Seminary. Welcome to the team. Aisha Siddiqui. He is not able to join us tonight. Okay. Letty Simon. Present. Hannah Singleman. Present. Susan Steinberg. Present. 
Mark Thompson. Present. Gabrielle Turzo. Present. Brian Van Neuvelhoven. Present. Jerry Weinstein. This is Jerry Weinstein. Uh, my, my fun fact as a new person is that uh, as a city bike rider, I have completed 5,488 miles over 800 hours. Damn. As well. <laughs> Welcome to the board. Uh, Matt, Matthew Weintraub. Present. Mara Wong. Present. Peter Zaidi. Present. Um, new member. Um, happy to be here. Um, fun fact. I still do film photography and slide photography and never truly moved to digital in, um, you know, with, uh, with the full heart. So it's a kind of a mixture. Is it done? What's your time? Uh, that is 38 uh, in attendance. And we are at quorum. All right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll now move on to our elected and agency representative reports. I've asked all of our elected officials to send over their reports ahead of time so that we can compile them. You can find just on order. Yep. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Uh, for the new members, given that we have a number of resolutions before us tonight, um, they need to be duly sworn before they can be before they can vote. It's a requirement in the city charter. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna follow how we've done it before um, online. Uh, they've already done this uh, with the borough president's office. So, uh, for efficiency's sake, we're gonna move. Um, ahead with the agenda as is. But and for, the, and for the record, that is not a requirement in the city charter. Okay. For any city office holder, it is. Okay. In the, in, in the law states that in order to be duly sworn in, one must sign a copy of the oath and submit a $9 payment to the city clerk. Um, community board members don't do that. Any oral recitation of the oath is purely ceremonial. All right, thank you for clarifying, Jesus. Um, so we'll move on to our elected officials. As I mentioned, you can find all of the reports that were submitted on the CB6 website, and the link to the reports was disseminated ahead of time to all board members and the general public, and for your convenience can be found in the chat now. So if you haven't had a chance, uh, the link will be in the chat for you to read the reports. I will now call on each of the elected officials who have confirmed their attendance tonight so that they can take questions from CB6 members and the public about their pre-submitted reports. Each elected official will have one minute to field questions. If there are no questions, we will move on to the next elected official on our list. If an elected official has a time sensitive matter to report on that didn't make it into their pre-submitted report, they will have three minutes to do so. And during this part of the meeting, we will also hear from government agency reps who have requested to address the board tonight. All right, so we'll start off with the district attorney's office. Eric, are you here? Might be on mute. Hi, Kyle. Sorry, working on some uh, technical difficulties here. All good. Um, yeah, so not too much to update the group on. Um, in addition to my report, wanted to just highlight that we talked about our Saturday Night Lights uh, kickoff event that took place on last Saturday. And also last Saturday was our um, gun buyback where we recovered 50 guns. Um, and as I've said before, we estimate that each gun recovered saves um, about three lives throughout the would-be lifetime of, of that firearm. So we were really happy with the results and then just wanted to highlight the first thing on the report, which is um, that we'll, we will be holding our annual Art of Healing Festival this Saturday, June 17th at PS007, located on uh, 160 East 120th Street from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, we have some virtual flyers just in case anyone wants to help us get the word out a few days before um, the actual event itself. And just as a really quick overview, it it's basically a platform or an opportunity for community members to um, heal from the trauma of gun violence through, through the arts. So there'll be a lot of things like spoken word, drawing, painting, music, food, dance, things like that, and should be a lot of fun. Um, nothing else to add, I don't think, so I'll just hand it back to you. And uh, thanks so much. Hope everyone's doing well. 
Thank you so much, Eric. Are there any questions from the board for the district attorney's office or from the public? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move on. Thank you so much, Eric, appreciate it. We'll go to Joanna Sanchez from Assembly Member Epstein's office. Joanna? Hello, hello everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. I'll put my information on the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Are there any questions for the Assembly Member's office? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to uh, Representative Goldman's office. Tevin? Is Tevin here? <clears throat> All right, we'll circle back. I don't see Tevin online. Uh, let's go to Senator Gonzalez's office, Peyton. Hey folks, I'm actually on right now. Oh, hey, Senator. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Be pretty good. We're all wet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's been, I know, very like intense downpours throughout the day. Um, apologies for bringing my phone. My laptop camera is suddenly not working. Um, but I wanted to pop in and say hi to everyone because we just finished session. Um, so I wanted to give some updates, um, you know, on this legislative session now that we're wrapping up and then see if there are any questions, anything, you know, from all of you, you'd like to see our office working on as we move to the second half of the year, which is essentially no longer, you know, me back and forth in Albany, but we're, you know, full-time in district now. Um, I, so as far as the end of session goes, I know last time I spoke about a few key pieces of legislation that we were working on. Um, I mentioned the class action bill. I mentioned some cybersecurity efforts um, between last time and now I've been able to pass a few more of my own bills including, um, you know, another cyber security, the Secure Data Act bill, um, a helicopter and seaplane bill, which I'm very excited about. It's a noise tax, and it also incentivizes um, helicopter and seaplane companies to electrify their fleet so that we are not only taxing and decreasing the amount of traffic we have along the East River, but we're also um, really and dealing with the noise pollution. But we're also dealing with the environmental impact of having, you know, so many, so many um, helicopters and seaplanes. And so I'm very excited that we were able to pass that through the Senate. We'll be back next um, session also fighting to pass that through the Assembly. Um, but this is an incredible, you know, it's it's it was an incredible fight because <laughs> I know, as you all know, um, this is a lot moneyed industry that does not want to be taxed, does not want to see any of their traffic decreased. Um, but it's a noise issue for us. It's a quality of life issue for us. So very excited to have gotten that through the Senate. Um, and then finally, I passed some additional bills around, um, you know, of my Internet Technology Committee, Wi-Fi for all shelters throughout um, the state to ensure that anyone who is in temporary housing has access to the internet because we know that's how people are able to find housing, find job, access um, not only educational opportunities, but health, um, health data. And so that's a bill I'm proud of, as well as information around like economic abuse. Um, so those were some additional bills I was able to pass. And then one major flag I wanted to share with all of you is that the legislative session ended without passing any um, any legislation around housing or any significant legislation around housing. So a few months back, we talked about how we had a budget where you know housing was taken out of the budget because there wasn't a consensus in the legislature about what to do. So that meant no consensus around tenant protections, no consensus around you know development. And um, we really worked hard. I certainly, you know, along with other senators, worked really hard for tenant protections. But unfortunately, by the end of this session, um, we were we were willing to compromise. We were willing to, you know, not only meet real estate where they were at by, you know, extending programs like 421A in exchange for bills like Good Cause, but they were not willing to negotiate and the governor threatened a veto. So we ended up not passing any of those bills. Um, and that's important. It'll affect everyone here who is a tenant. Um, it'll affect, it, you know, no matter what, if you're a homeowner too, there were bills in there in that package as well that would affect you. Um, and it, I'll definitely need all of, you know, your help as you have a lot of folks here have been vocal moving into next year around housing because we're in a housing crisis. Um, moving briefly to the district oh. side, 
we've been focused on street safety. We've been, I'm very concerned about the effect of congestion pricing on folks who live in Manhattan. So working across levels of government to figure out more about that, um, that plan and take more feedback moving forward. We're working around, when I say also street safety, not only congestion pricing, but also protecting pedestrians and bikers um, as we deal with an incredible amount of traffic. Um, we've been canvassing um, in different parts of the district. We want to continue doing that in Manhattan. And our office, I mentioned this last time, is open near Grand Central. So if you have any case work, any help that you need with, you know, anything from housing to, you know, Department of Labor to immigration, anything that you, you know, may benefit for support um, from, I have my office ready to go. Peyton on this call is our community affairs liaison, and she's um, been handling our casework for Manhattan. So please reach out to us. We're here. Um, and, you know, with that, I'll pause. And if there are any questions, happy to give more information. No problem. Thank you. We actually do have a question. Uh, Susan, go ahead. You have the floor. Hi, Peyton. Um, I have one thank you and one question. The thank you is for the seaplanes and helicopter tax. The uh, residents in Stuyvesant Town who live along, and Peter Cooper Village, who live along Avenue C are very appreciative for that and for the work that your office is doing in this regard. The question I have is, uh, there's been such a buzz about artificial intelligence. Is this under um, Kritzen's uh, Aegis, as it were. Also, hi, Susan. It's good to see you again. This is actually me. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're able to see the, the camera, but it's good to see you again. Or you grew your hair <laughs> quickly. All good, all good. Um, so I'm so glad you asked that because actually one update I did forget to give is that we are taking on AI as our main issue for the rest of the year. So we're going to be doing three hearings at the state, with the state legislature, so the assembly and the Senate, to cover issues of the future of work and AI. So what does it look like um, as we automate jobs, as we see layoffs, how do we protect workers? Um, another around education and another around the use of AI in government. And we're currently working on a few pieces of legislation. Um, we one already introduced called the Loading Act. It was introduced at the end of session that is specifically addressing issues of decision AI and decision making used by government. So that's to regulate it a little bit more. And then we will be introducing another bill shortly that's a um, essentially a risk framework and a regulatory framework for private companies. Um, so yeah, we'll be we'll be definitely it's it's within our committee's purview and we'll be. Um, taking that on in the next few months. All right, great. Uh, seeing no further questions, thank you very much, Senator, and stay dry. Great. Thank you all so much, take care. Bye guys. Right. We'll next move on to City Comptroller Lander's office. Evelyn, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Kyle. Uh, and. Um, Hi everyone, thank you for the opportunity to uh, address you tonight. Um, I sent um, uh, a lengthy report uh, to CV6 earlier uh, this week and uh, uh, I'm sure there you will be able to access um, all the information about how you know, our office has been um, you know, interacting with all the issues that are going on uh, within the city. Uh, but I wanted to take the opportunity tonight to uh, speak to you about our um, LGBTQ plus guide of services and resources. Uh, this is a comprehensive citywide uh, directory of resources for uh, the LGBTQ plus communities. And it has information on over 200 organizations that provide programs and services uh, to New Yorkers from healthcare to housing to mental health, the arts and youth mm -hmm. services. Um, you can find it uh, online. Um, you can access it online. It's, it's, it's interactive, it's live. We are, uh, we keep adding, uh, you know, organizations that have shown interest in being part of this effort. Uh, but if you all, if you would like to have a um, a printed copy, you can also email us uh, and we'll get it for you. It's uh, action at comptroller.nyc.gov. Uh, and thank you. Thank you very much. And can you add that to the uh, to the chat as well, please? Will do. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, thank you very much. Seeing no further questions for the Comptroller's office, we'll move on to questions for Councilwoman Rivera's office. Eddie? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Saul, and I'm covering on behalf uh, for Eddie um, and for Councilmember Rivera's office. Um, just aside from the updates we submitted in our June report, uh, Councilmember Rivera oh. delivered testimony at uh, last night's um, Rent Guidelines Board meeting hearing, and it's available to read on oh. our website. So I can uh, drop that in the chat if anyone uh, is interested. Great. Thank you very much and welcome. Uh, and seeing no further questions, uh, we'll move on. Uh, let's go to Senator Kruger's office. Wendy? Is Wendy here? Her audio is not working for hearing. Oh, OK. Uh, well, thank you very much, Wendy. Wendy's information is in the chat. So if there are any further questions for the Senator's office, um, please reach out uh, to them directly. And Anne, is that related to Senator Kruger, your, your hand? It is. So if I could just ask it, and maybe she could just get back to me. Yeah, she has no audio. So just um, if yeah, you Yeah, so, but I mean, I think that means she can't. But Anne, she, she can hear me, she just can't answer. And so that doesn't make sense. So um, I'm not going to recognize you from the floor. Oh. Okay, like, and Seriously, Anne, I could have Anne, asked the question in the time Anne, it would you're take. You're out of do. order. Can we mute Anne, please? Thank you very much. And I will not issue you another uh, out of order. We will take disciplinary action as the bylaws require. So please do not outburst again. Thank you. I'm trying to be a professional board here. Uh, let's move on to Pat from Councilmember Powers Office. Good evening, everyone. Um, I don't have anything to add on top of our report, um, but if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I can get back to you with an answer. Awesome. Uh, Stu, go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Um, I think we're going to be discussing a resolution supporting intro 778 today, uh, which is the um, sound cameras. If you're going to be here for the um, discussion on the resolutions, then I'll defer. Otherwise, I'd like to ask a few clarifications now, if I could. Pat, if you, if you want to ask Pat. All right. right. I, I guess yeah, I was reading you. Um, yeah. If there's any questions you have, uh, I can I can take them now. Um, okay. And uh, if I can't answer them, I'll be sure to take them back and you know take down your info so I can get back to you offline. Okay. So this is the sound camera um, uh, law. It's intro 778, and it mm -hmm. directs the DMV, I believe, to try different technologies. Apparently, at this at the same location. Um, it's called a demonstration program, but actual summonses and fines will be issued. So what do we know about the degree of accuracy uh, of these sound cameras? Um, have there been studies that show them to be um, reliable? Uh, do we know how often we get false hits? And, um, and uh, well, I'll leave it there. Yeah, sure. Um... You can speak to that a little bit. Um, I don't have the exact data. Um, this is so last June, uh, DEP began a year long pilot program that uh, used the sound triggered roadside cameras to ticket vehicles exceeding certain decibel levels, it's 85 decibels or louder from a distance of 50 feet or more. That pilot program has ended. What this bill is looking to do is make that permanent. Um, so it would establish a permanent noise camera program that would detect uh, those vehicles exceeding the noise limits. I mean, obviously any vehicle found to be violating the limits would be issued a notice of violation would be subject to the civil penalty. Um, DEP would be required to submit uh, to the mayor and the speaker of the council and to post on its website annual reports of the program, including the locations of the noise cameras, the number of violations detected, um, and any revenue raised as a result of the program. What I can say um, is that uh, the cameras were tested in four different locations throughout the city. Uh, I believe two in Queens and two in Manhattan. I'm not entirely sure on the specific areas. Uh, there, uh, there has been some issue with the cameras being able to pick up intentionally obscured license plates that they're working on. Um, but the DEP found that uh, overall that the cameras appeared to be more successful at addressing muffler noise issues than in-person in joint operations with the NYPD and uh, cited that you know in-person cita citations are usually one-time events uh, that generally don't result in larger change. Do we um, know? Do we know how often they get false positives? How I don't. Uh, I don't have that information with me, but I can definitely look into it and get back to you offline. Uh, I mean, that's a sort of important question. Um, if if this um, if this intro is going to pass, 
Uh, the intro also says that there's going to be signs warning people on the street that these devices are present. What's the point of that? Uh, to let folks know that the camera will be there as to slow down and to try to reduce the noise of their vehicle. Um, obviously, with some modified mufflers, that's impossible. Uh, that's part of the reason why this is existing, to try and get those off the street. Um, but uh, in terms of the signs, it's essentially just to uh, kind of adequate notice that the cameras are out there. Um, it's not to say that they still won't, you know, get violations or people, uh, you know, breaking that rule. Right. But I'm wondering why we want to notify people that we're going to, you know, that that there's um, um, enforcement here. Go over to the next street and you won't have this issue. What, what's the point of notifying potential violators that they could be caught on this? Particular? I don't have an answer for you, but I'd be more than happy to connect with you offline. OK. And my last question then is. Has, has this been tested in any court? I mean, have has it been challenged um, because it's not accurate? Uh, that I'm not aware of. Um, again, I don't have that information in front of me. I, I have to lose information on the bill, um, but I can take those questions and uh, get answers for you offline. Okay, thank you. Of course. Are there uh, any additional questions? Uh, not for me. Kyle, you're muted. Sorry. Rich, you have the floor now. Uh, just since, since uh, we were talking about that, I, I do want to note that I know two people who received uh, these noise citations and uh, uh, deserve them. They were accurate. Uh, but we can talk more about it uh, when we discuss the bill. All right. Thank you, Rich. Um, and do you have a question for Keith's office? Um, I had a question about this as well. I was going to ask you when we discuss the Reslo and it was, it was, but it speaks to um, Stu's point about the kind of the accuracy of the technology. And I think the Reslo would be stronger. Um, and I don't know if, if um, Patrick, if there's anything that can be added that uh, speaks to how well the technology works, because I think that would make it a stronger Reslo. I, I mean, I guess that's the board's purview uh, if they want to add something to the resolution. But uh, I, I do not have that information uh, on hand tonight. Uh, so I'd have to go back and get that and uh, provide that for you offline. So I, I would be able to provide accurate data as to um, back up that resolution. All right. We'll go to Stephen and then to Gabe, and then we'll move on to our next rep. So, Steve, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, you said this was a pilot program from the DEP. Yes. Uh, is this is the um, uh, the report of the pilot program? Is that made public? Uh, I am not entirely sure it's made public yet. I don't believe so. Um, but I can again, I can add that to the list of questions. You know, uh, there's more so for DEP um, that we can take back and get answers on. And um, I can get back to you all on that. I can send the answers along to the board office for you know dissemination if that helps. Uh, and then Gabe. Uh, yeah, actually, just real quick as a comment, there is language in the bill regarding the calibration and standardization and testing of these devices, and yes. we do it that very briefly in the reso. Yes, uh, thank you for flagging that, Gabe, uh, and sorry for not mentioning that as well. There, uh, so part of our bill does call on each device to be calibrated annually to ensure proper readings. Okay, thank you very much, Pat. Busy night for you, <laughs> so thank you uh, for answering our questions. All good. If there's right. any additional questions, I will, uh, I'll be here. Awesome. Uh, we'll now move on to the Public Advocates Office. Curtis, welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, I am just leaving the Borough President's LGBT Pride event with Councilman Eric Botcher. So uh, excuse my location. I'm in the subway now. Uh, my name is Curtis Chung. I'm the Manhattan Moral Advocate in the Office of the Public Advocate. I don't have much to add um, from what's in the report. Um, you can refer to the report, and I will put my contact information in the chat box if there are any questions, comments, or concerns for you to follow up with me on. We do have a uh, Pride event coming up in the next few weeks. If you are interested in marching with the Public Advocate, I will also drop that link in the chat box, and we'd love to have you. Thank 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 you
Thank you all and happy Friday. Hey, thank you very much, Curtis. That's a true New Yorker <laughs> attendance at a community board meeting from the train. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much to you and the public advocate. Uh, we'll now move on. Do we have uh, Robin from the mayor's office with us? Yes, yet? hi. Hey, hi Robin. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Uh, following up, happy Pride Month, everyone. As you probably know, City Hall and other municipal buildings in the city were lit in rainbow uh, at the start of uh, rainbow colors at the start of Pride Month. And all month long, if you're around City Hall, you will see the pride flag, the Philly pride flag, and also the transgender flag. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, second, I wanted to mention, um, I don't know if you are aware, but the state made a grant uh, for schools, DOE, to purchase food from local farmers. Um, we were awarded eight, eight and, nearly eight and a half billion dollars and this will allow funds to be spent on locally grown foods from local producers, small businesses, and historically disadvantaged farmers and producers. So a, a nice thing. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention, I don't know if you're aware this happened uh, towards the end of last month, um, but the last remaining official uh, colored school or a school for colored children um, has received a grant to rehabilitate the school as a landmark. Uh, it's in Chelsea on West 17th Street, and it is the last surviving building in Manhattan that exclusively served Black Americans uh, during the period of mandated racial segregation in New York City schools. So um, I think that's a pretty terrific thing, and I'm happy to take any questions if you have them. Otherwise, that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Robin, appreciate it. Are there Thank any questions for the mayor's office from the board? All right, seeing none. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, bye-bye, have a good night. Thank you, and last but not least, we'll go to Trisha from the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Hi, everybody, uh, happy Pride, happy June. It's good to see all of you. A special hello to Brian Lafferty, of course, in, in your district office. Um, I There's not much to report uh, here besides what's in the actual report, but I wanted to say a few things. One to Susan, uh, you hit on a topic that RBP is obsessed about. I frankly have to tell him every week that like he needs to stop talking about AI and about some and take on some other topics. So I think that if you're interested in having a conversation with him, I'm sure he would love it. But we also have a, a platform on our website where you can actually give feedback on what you'd like to see policies focus on and that sort of thing. And it's just one of many ways that you can use our website. Um, I would really encourage it. And in fact, I'm going to send you the link anyway, so you don't have to go searching for it. So don't worry about it. It's going to come in your inbox as soon as I get off this Zoom. Uh, also to Jerry, my husband heard you in the background. He's actually on CB8's meeting right now covering for me because I am then jumping to CB8 to deal with the land use issue. But uh, Jerry, uh, my husband said, that's so cool. How do you figure out how many miles we've done on our city bike? So I may ask you outside of all of this to tell me how to do that because uh, my husband was asking and I was looking in the background as well, but I love that. Uh, to all of the new members, Jerry included, I just want to tell you, I'm so happy to see you on. Um, I know that Mark can say it and he's very happy too, but I have a personal stake in seeing this because we read over a thousand applications. Um, we did hours, about 20 hours of interviews uh, to, to find you and we are just so happy you're here. So I, from the bottom of my heart as a former community board member for 10 years, I, I just want to tell you, I'm so, I could not be happier to see you on. I know you guys are going to do incredible things. And the one thing I'm going to emphasize from our report, uh, is that we have three trainings coming up designed for you. Um, so I know that that's a lot of, a lot of meetings to go to, but I hope that you would be able to join us for either this Friday, next Thursday, or the following Friday, one of those times to do some onboarding with us. We just want to emphasize a couple things home for you, namely attendance and other things like that to make sure that we can, um, that we can really, uh, put, set you on the best foot forward for your, for your tenure on the board. So, uh, for existing members, you're always welcome to join us too. Uh, but just for those new members, I want to make sure that you guys know that, 
and know that those times are up there. You should have gotten an email from us. And if you haven't, you can send me an email and we'll figure that out. Otherwise, good luck for a good meeting. If you need anything from me, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Kyle, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, and thank you again. Congratulations to all of you. I'm, I'm so excited to, to see you and to see what you do. Thank you very much, Tricia. And thank you for uh, to you and the Borough President's Office for appointing such wonderful members to our board. We're very excited uh, to get the work started. And they are too. So that's all we can ask for. <laughs> all right. Are there any other questions for Tricia and the Borough President's Office? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the public session. Hey, Zeus, do we have any speakers in the public session? Yes, we do. We have three speakers. However, the first one, I'm not sure I see. Uh, Alex Liu, are you here? I don't see Alex here. All right. So I don't either. So uh, going once, going twice, we will move on then. Um, hold up. We have someone who didn't uh, RSVP, but we'll, we'll, we'll give them the floor. Uh, James from Assemblymember Boris's office before we just move on. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I RSVP'd at the last second because I always send the report and then forget I still have to RSVP for the Zoom. Uh, oh, oh. Only addendum. I want to make to our report is that if you notice the first item on our report says the legislative session was scheduled to close on Friday the 9th and it was but it didn't uh, so our assembly member is returning to Albany next week for three days so feel free to continue sending us uh, suggestions um, piece of legislation that you want us to focus on things like that there's a few days of session left happy to take any questions. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hello. 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 This is Nathan. Nathan, you're not uh, recognized to speak yet. This is just to the board because um, you are speaking in the public session. So we have you covered. But are there any other questions for the assembly members office? All right. Seeing none. Thank you very much, James. Thanks, everyone. Now we will return to our regularly scheduled programming <laughs> with the public session. Um, already in progress. Yes. Can you uh, can you reintroduce, please? <laughs> yes. All right. Our first speaker was not here. That's fine. Our next speaker is Nathan Townsend uh, Levy. He was a resident of Manhattan Community District 6 and wishes to speak to the board about the need for football fields in this district. Mr. Levy, you have the floor for three minutes. You may begin your remarks now. Yes, hello. This is Nathan Townsend Levy. I've been a community board six member for years. I grew up in Frederick County, Maryland, where there were more football fields with proper yard lines and proper goal posts, as every fan of football knows that you need. And the thing about CB6 is, as much as I love it, I don't think that the love of football should be privileged to those who can Uber to Westchester and back every day or every week or every month. I think we ought to build two beautiful football fields with yard lines and goalposts and soft grass right here in CB6. We just had a senator on, a very powerful senator. This could be done, and I hope it is done by July 15th of 2026 at the latest. I was recommended by some members of CB6 that we go through participatory budgeting, but I think that we may bl blow past our allocated share or maybe even the entire thing of participatory budgeting with these two football fields. I had recommended the only land available I saw was on the east and west side of Stuyvesant Square Park. I think we can move the statues and other things. These had been, uh, this land had been zoned for, quote, passive use, unquote. And I, I think that this this could be problematic because really parks are, they're, they're, parks aren't meant to be passive. Pa parks are meant for Frisbees and cardio. If you want to be passive, you can do that on, on your balcony or, or, or on a rooftop. What we need, we've got 7,000 coffee shops in CB6. We've got 40 places to pay 50 bucks a day to park. We've got everything you can imagine. But one thing we do not have is nice, soft AstroTurf football fields with yard lines and goalposts. And, and, and if we can land a person on the moon, I think we ought to be able to have this. We, we need to raise the next generation of New York Jets and New York Giants. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to happen by themselves. And other people can talk about things like I don't know what peer-reviewed research said that, that a gun removed saves three lives or something about noise levels or something about congestion pricing. But what I'm really curious about is how soon can we get these football fields in the east and west half of Stuyvesant you know, Square Park in CB6? And you know, I think Mark Levine would be interested. I think senators would be interested. I think our governor would be interested. Uh, the only other thing I'd be curious about that was brought up tonight is what, what a local farm means. I wasn't aware there were that many farms in Manhattan, but but you know for the local stu school students. But but other but more mainly focusing on those football fields, 
You know, we got to we gotta get football fields. And by the way, I also think that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday can be football night. I think Tuesday and Thursday should be Frisbee night. But we need to build them in order to have football night and to have Frisbee night. And, and I, think, uh, I think now is the time to build them. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much, Nathan. Just want to thank you again for your advocacy for green space and parks in our district. Um, whatever that may look like, um, whether they're a football field or not. Um, I'll continue our thread uh, through email. Um, you can work directly with me um, to, uh, to best prep this um, for our local officials. Um, so you have that direct contact with me. Um, so we'll continue to work together. And uh, just slight edit before we move on to the next uh, to the next speaker, which one of our members highlighted in the chat, which is that we should also be raising Buffalo Bills fans because they are the only team that plays in New York State. So thank you very much again, Nathan. Uh, and let's move on to our next speaker. All right. Thank you. Moving along, we've got our final speaker for the night. Uh, Roy Strickland, who is a resident of Manhattan Community District 6, and who wishes to address the board on the matter regarding uh, proposed shelter at 130, 130 East 39th Street. Uh, Mr. Strickland, you have the floor for three minutes. You may begin your remarks now. Yes, thank you. Can I be heard? Yes, you can. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm actually the second generation in my family to live in Murray Hill, and I'm deeply invested in the neighborhood and uh, truly enjoy it, uh, and I'm committed to it. Uh, I understand that the community board has no say in uh, the uh, location of a shelter at 39th Street and Lexington Avenue, but uh, I would urge people on the board as individuals and also other community uh, members who may be listening today but to get in touch with elected representatives about this issue. So perhaps we can uh, change the, um, the outcomes uh, at that location. Uh, the following facts and figures uh, were uh, developed from the Cranes New York report on the shelter. The city will pay $32 million per year for 200 families or $13,330 per month per unit or $160,000 per year per unit in a city where the median rent is 3,500 per month, high enough, and 50% of people are rent burdened. To qualify for a $13,333 market rate apartment, a household would have to make 40 times the monthly rent or $533,320 per year, placing that household in the top 2% in the country. That's in a city where median, in, median household income is $70,633 per year. Where is the equity in this, please? The project's nine year cost of the city will be $287 million. That's enough to build 600 permanent low income housing units like those near Woodhull Hospital in Brooklyn. For comparison's sake, a luxury two bedroom apartment in Hudson Yards one of the most expensive developments in the city costs $10,895 per month, <clears throat> not over $13,000. <clears> this shelter is a wasteful use of taxpayer money. I urge Murray Hill neighbors and Community Board 6 to stop this taxpayer supported extravagance and research alternatives for the site, including the re renovation of the building as permanent low and moderate income housing, similar to the aforementioned project or at minimum sub subdivide the lease terms, allowing review of the shelter's operation every two years to determine its efficacy and whether the building may be put to better use in solving New York's shortage of permanent affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks, Mr. Strickland. Kyle, that concludes the speaker's list uh, for the public session this evening. All right, thank you very much, Jesus. We'll move to previous meetings full board minutes. The minutes from the May 10th full board meeting were distributed to board members ahead of time by the board office. If there is no objection, we will adopt the minutes as drafted. Board members, if you object to adopting the minutes, please raise your hand through Zoom. All right, seeing no objections, the minutes from the May 10th full board meeting are adopted and they will soon be available on the CB6 website. Uh, we'll now move on to the chair's report. Um, the first thing 
is that the, um, the mayor's uh, emergency orders are in effect until next week. Um, we are preparing um, for all possibilities, whether they continue um, business as usual. If they're not, um, we have the ability to move to a hybrid mode. Um, we may all recall, for those who have been on the board for a little bit, um, recall that there were some challenges to that in the past, because uh, essentially they were in-person meetings and do require quorums and things like that. Um, so please, as you look uh, towards your schedule for the fall, because uh, we do take our summer hiatus, um, please make sure that you are thinking about that as a possibility um, throughout the summer. So I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Uh, the second thing is just want to talk about uh, very quickly Stuyvesant Cove Park uh, reopened. Uh, we're all very, very excited about that. This has truly been um, a community board effort um, for many for, uh, for a generation, at least. Um, I'm pleased to announce that we were uh, joined by three previous full board chairs, uh, including uh, Jane Crotty, uh, who was the, uh, the chair in 1991, uh, Arnold Lehman, who was the chair in the mid to late 90s, and our very own Marty Barrett, um, who was the chair at the turn of the century as well, um, and was all very critical to making sure that these um, uh, that this park, first of all, existed and that we continue to maintain it. And then finally, now that we are open uh, as well. So I want to thank everybody uh, on the board present and past for all of the work that they led on Sci Cove Park. And I hope everyone gets a chance to go out and visit it. It's really beautiful. Um, the flood walls are up. Um, you can take a look at those as well. So hope everyone enjoys uh, that over the summer as well. Uh, and with that, I will conclude my chair's report and move on to Jesus. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone, and especially uh, a special warm welcome to the new members that we have. Uh, welcome. I look forward to working with you all. Uh, a few housekeeping things. Uh, one, yes, I am glad that Kyle mentioned the uh, executive order. Um, the executive order expires on Monday, and so by later that day or Tuesday, we will know whether it's going to be extended again or not. We have heard some rumblings that it may not be extended again, which would mean that meetings after Tuesday of next week will have to be, uh, will have to achieve an in-person quorum, which is not something we've had to do for quite some time. Um, the most important thing I can tell to, uh, to, to all you members is, watch your emails. The CB6 office, as soon as we know anything, will let you know whether you should expect to turn up to your meetings in person uh, or whether we can still do it on Zoom. Um, second, you should uh, familiar, uh, re-familiarize yourself with the resolution that this board passed one year ago uh, at June 2022's full board it pretty much details what the rules will be if the executive order is not extended. Um, short, long story short, um, in-person quorum, uh, a few limited opportunities for members who have um, uh, certain extenuating circumstances to attend by Zoom. So uh, read that resolution, it's on the resolution tracker. That is on the website and I will, for those, I will go ahead and show, I love showing the website. For those who are new, you will see that we have um, a resolution database right here where we put all the resolutions that we've passed as well as resolutions that are upcoming. While we're on the topic of the website, I wanna draw your attention to something that you may not have noticed. It's a new addition to the website. Uh, down here, you may notice, this little icon, we have been working to try and make our website, uh, to improve our website and make it truly the best community board website in the city. It already is, but we're trying to make it even better. Um, we understand that maybe some residents in our district might be differently abled. And so this little icon will now allow visitors to our site to adapt the site to their needs. Let's say they're low vision. Let's say they have ADHD. Let's say they have a, some other uh, issue that they want to adapt the website for. And the website as it's currently constructed maybe isn't the best fit for them. This will allow them to adapt our site 
uh, for their uses. So it's a new feature on the website. So for those who need it, you now have it available to you and we hope you like it. Um, and even for those who necessarily don't um, consider themselves differently able, um, you know, the dark contrast mode allows you to change our website to dark mode, which may actually be a better viewing experience for people. Uh, uh, so I encourage you, if you need, uh, if, if you want to make use of it, to check it out. Uh, if you ever want to reset and make it look the way it always did, you can always click reset. It's very easy to use. But this little icon will now appear on our website, and it will remember your settings. Let's say you want to always have it in a, cer in a certain mode. You click it once, it will remember, um, and if you, it's easily changeable. So we wanted to bring that to your attention because uh, um, folks may not know that we've been doing, we've been working on this aspect of the website. So unless there are any questions, uh, my report is done. Uh, I have a question from Letty. Letty, you have the floor. Letty, you're on mute. I first of all, I want. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear yes, you. We now. Can. I'm just having problem with this. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank you for the work you did on the website. I think that's a great idea. Um, but the one question I have is why are we the only website without a search feature? When we were designing the website with uh, the firm that this board engaged to design the, uh, the website, they judged that it was uh, not necessarily something that uh, was necessary at the time. Okay, I mean, because we're the only one that every website I've been to has a web has a search feature, and it occurred to me. So thank you for the answer and good work on what you've done. Thank but you. We'll note, we'll, we'll note it and we'll we have uh, regular conversations with them and we'll see. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, seeing no further questions and also Letty, your hand is still up. Uh, so I just want to make sure that when you do have it up again that I'm calling for the right thing. Um, so we've now arrived at our committee. Is it report. off now? Uh, yes. It's I'm just having a problem with this, so so sorry. You're all good. Thank you. Uh, we've now arrived at our committee reports and resolutions. And so a reminder that the same rules that were stated at the beginning of the meeting apply. Uh, please remember to raise your hand and that you need to be recognized before speaking on an issue. And to the members of the public, please know that during this session of the meeting, we only recognize questions from members of the board. The CB6 staff will now post a link to the digital ballot in the chat. Please click on the link or copy and paste it into your browser to open this ballot. Select your name from the drop-down list and select your vote on each resolution as it is presented. Please do not hit submit until later in the meeting after the final resolution has been presented. At the end of the meeting, please submit after you have indicated all of your votes on your ballot. You will not be able to submit the ballot unless you vote on every resolution. If you plan on abstaining, please select abstain. The final vote counts will be announced after the second roll call. And if any part of our voting procedure is unclear, please raise your hand through Zoom now and we will address your question. Okay, seeing none. And just uh, as a quick uh, edit for new members, um, you are able to vote on the resolutions that will be presented tonight. You are able to ask questions. Um, if you are comfortable, you are able to vote however you feel. Um, if you would like to abstain, you're able to abstain as well. So uh, let's begin. We'll start off with public safety. Matt? There we go. Yeah. Um, right, so we have uh, one resolution tonight um, dealing with scaffolding reform, sidewalk shed reform, um, some, some modifications to local law 11 uh, through a package of city council legislation. Uh, this is very similar to what was reported in the borough president's shed the shed plan for those that would prefer a uh, more of a plain English um, explanation. And I believe Anne has an amendment. Anne, you're recognized, go ahead. Um, yeah, I am 
completely, you know, in support of the intent of this. And I'm so delighted with the work that has been done on this. My only concern is um, with its, its friendly amendment that the last whereas um, is a call to action. And so it should either therefore be resolved, which is like a super easy change, or um, I actually sent Matt just before the meeting um, a, a way to reword it that could uh, present it as um, a, a statement of fact rather than a call to action. That's how I think of, especially for the new members, um, that's kind of how I how I think of the difference when you're writing a resolution that um, a whereas is a statement of fact and a resolved is a request, a, a, a call to action. And um, so I, actually, I don't know if you can pull if, the resolution up so that yeah, that's what, what I was, was referring to. Please. <clears throat> and continue in. So on line 44, where we say the city council must increase funding, I, I think we can either change that to, uh, you know, therefore be it resolved, you know, we want the city council, you know, we request the Manhattan Community Board urges, requests, desires, you know, to increase funding for the department buildings. It could also be changed, and if if we do it that way, the second one has to be therefore be it also resolved. Um, it could also be changed, saying that you know the the current funding is inadequate, and there we need more. So, I'm sorry, I was not able to make that meeting. I had a conflict, so or I, and I don't even know if it was written then, but that's my concern. All right, is the, um, is the language that you're seeing on the screen um, satisfactory? Absolutely. All right, again, the, the budget, it, so the budget uh, issue is not necessarily uh, addressed in the pieces of legislation, but it's very pertinent ahead of the budget. Yeah. Just, uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. So uh, yeah. I did want to make that clear that, um, you know, it's, in addition to passing legislation, it's it's serious. It's a serious budget matter. Yeah, uh, that's why I, I think it's all the more reason. I think sometimes uh, our elected officials they skip over the whereas is and go right to the resolved. So uh, I, th I think it's all the more reason to have it as a resolved. All right. Uh, I see Marty's hand up. Marty, go ahead. I object to <clears throat> adding uh, <clears throat> reference to the budget. That's what our budget priorities are for. Uh, CB6 forever has not included budget items in our resolutions. That That is for our budget priorities. Okay, noted. Uh, Matt, how would you like to proceed? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that. I mean, but I think I think in this case, um, you know, we need to we need to make the uh, point that um, that passing the legislation on its own will not solve the problem. Uh, there's a lot of resources attached to the uh, bills for sure, some of the budgetary matter. So I mean, you can address it through both channels, but uh, I think it's, it's very important to uh, include that here. Yeah, I would just make the distinction that this particular resolution isn't asking for X, Y, Z uh, figure of budget allocation to a certain thing. It's more of a general request that in order to accomplish this, uh, more funding would be needed as a whole. Is that correct, exactly. Matt? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. And do you have something to add to that? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So seeing no further questions on this, um, I will end debate on this and move it to a vote. So please go back to your digital ballot. Mark your vote for this resolution. This is 1A. And again, do not hit submit until the end of the night. And while that's going on, Matt, do you have a report? Um, no major report. We will not have a, a June meeting. Uh, hopefully not have a July or August meeting. 
um, that's pretty much it. Um, of course, you know, we'll keep you posted um, on any incidents that occur um, over the summer. Um, and hopefully everybody can. I will uh, point out that there will be a National Night Out Against Crime events occurring on August 1st, Tuesday evening, both the 17th and the 13th precincts. Um, CB6 is usually a part of that, so the board office will uh, communicate further. Um, there'll be opportunities for volunteers, I'm sure, at the tables, and uh, hope, hope to see some people out there over the summer. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Let's move on to our next committee, Budget and Governmental Affairs. Reshma. Thank you, Kyle. Mm -hmm. um, at our meeting this month, um, we discussed our uh, budget priorities and we are still awaiting responses from most of the other committees. So we didn't have that um, many updates and I am going to be reaching out uh, to committee chairs over the summer. Uh, we won't be having a July meeting, but I some chairs have already set up meetings one-on-one -on -one to make sure that come late August, we have all our budget priorities updated um, and we're ready to submit our community need statement at the end of October. And we will also be having a public meeting on the budget in September. We also uh, had a suggestion from one of our committee members about having a resolution um, to support the city this past week as it, Everyone probably knows, you know, made mandatory composting. Uh, and um, as a committee, we were thinking that we need to have education so people know how to do it properly, as well as um, the right amount of pickups of composting. Uh, right now, there's once a week here in um, this district, and um, it was suggested that we would need more pickups for this program to really work effectively. And we reached out to the Parks Committee uh, to discuss this as well, uh, since it overlaps uh, with that committee. I have nothing else. Okay, great. Um, so are there any questions about Resolution 2A? Give it a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mention this resolution at all because we had discussed okay. it at the last uh, 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 meeting, but I will just uh, uh, update on that. Um, as we've discussed at our, I mean, I think last board meeting, but as well as several board meetings, we've been discussing this since February. It's uh, a bill that has been in the state Senate and state assembly uh, to support the conversion of um, dwellings that are basements or cellars into safe and legal housing, because as we saw with Hurricane Ida, uh, when people live in illegal housing uh, that doesn't meet the code, um, it can result in a terrible situation where, with the loss of life. And so we as a committee thought it was important to support this bill. It did not pass this session, but um, will be reintroduced next session. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Reshma. Um, so are there any questions on 2A? All right, seeing none, we'll close debate on that and move it to a vote. So please go back to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 2A. And again, please do not hit submit until later in the night. Okay. And that was your report as well, Reshma, right? Yes, yes. And I'm sorry, I, I messed up the order because I went into the report first <laughs> before the resolution. There's a lot going on. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's move on to land use and waterfront. <clears throat> Sandy, you have the floor. Sorry, muted. Okay. We have two resolutions um, in front um, of the board. One is the um, special, <clears throat> no objection to the Board of Standards and Appeals special order calendar SOC application. And what this is, it's a request by <clears throat> a local uh, building to change their arcade into a more, um, uh, it's actually making the arcade close to certain times in the day. Um, right now it's open 24 seven and they would like to have it closed at certain times due to um, how the space is being used. All right, I see a hand up from Marty. Marty, go ahead. 
what was the uh, what did the building get uh, in a, uh, for addition in order to have the open space and what was their agreement for that? They received additional FAR, um, so the building is taller. Um, <clears throat> one of the things is it was scheduled as an arcade versus a pops. Uh, this, there was quite a bit of confusion actually in our, our committee about what the difference was. Um, but unfortunately, arcades are meant to link. They're meant to be a continuous space. This is not. It's just a covered space. Um, and I don't know if people are familiar with it, but it is not a pleasant space. So they are trying to make it, they're trying to make it more useful and actually continue to be a public space. And, and, and they guarantee that it will be opened, that there's, <clears throat> you know, that, that there's somebody who will definitely open it at 7 a.m.? It's the law. <clears throat> if it's not, they get fined. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we've seen this happen actually in some of the pops in our area that have not conformed to the requirements. Okay, are there any further questions uh, for Sandy on 3A? All right, seeing none, we'll close debate on 3A and move to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 3A. Um, while you're thinking about 3A, we also have a, um, a resolution on the proposed city of yes for carbon neutrality. This is something we discussed in, the, um, in, in several meetings and we had a public hearing and we support this proposal. Text amendment. I see a hand from Jim. Jim, go ahead. You have the floor. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and I had voted against this in the... Uh, the city of yes in the committee meeting as well. And I understand that this is just with respect to uh, make enabling a city law that requires uh, lower, uh, lower uh, emissions from buildings. However, <clears throat> this is kind of enabling of a of a bad policy. Um, in my view, New York City is basically committing suicide with all of these additional regulations aimed at uh, carbon emissions and what have you, and imposing them on a fine basis as opposed to uh, more of a stick than a. Um, I support notions where we do these things via incentive. I do not. I do not support them where there is a stick uh, imposed on property owners, on tenants, on landlords, et cetera, et cetera. This is, in my view, it's mistaken. I, as I say, I support general carbon reduction, um, but I mean, no, someone no less than John Kerry, the the administration's chief uh, climate uh, <clears throat> officer. Bizarre, uh has said that all of this is simply performative at this point because client uh, continents that like Asia and India and Africa are in, are overwhelming anything that we might do here on a on a municipal basis in New York City. So while we're doing things that are performative. <clears throat> We are also imposing huge expenses on our businesses, our property owners, our tenants who have to ultimately pay all of this stuff. So I, I oppose this for that reason. Um, Jim, this is actually, there are no fines associated with this. This is zoning. So this allows no, people I understand, to, to modify I understand all that. I, under, okay. I understand all that, but ultimately, they are getting to fines. Ultimately, they will get to fines if you're if you're like a building that has, for example, a, a D rating right now, will ultimately be subject to fines. And it's a mistake to impose it that way. Uh, and you know, doing 
passing this, uh, the, the city of yes, simply says, well, now you can do it. Okay. And if you haven't done it, we're going to fine you. So that's my opposition to the entire thing. It's a, I think it's a huge mistake and it's, and it's dangerous to the economy of the city of New York. Okay, uh, noted, thank you, Jim. Are there any further questions on 3B? Sandy, do you wanna say anything else before I close? Um, no, as I, as I stated, this is really, it's giving the opportunity to provide some of the buildings to be more energy efficient. And um, it does deal with solar, <clears throat> solar panel use, some things that are very topical currently within the city. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, and seeing no further questions on this, I'll close debate on 3B and we'll move to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 3B. And while people are doing that, uh, do you have an additional report, Cindy? Or? Um, we will be having a meeting in June. We're hoping that the borough president's office will be able to give us some update on, um, there's a potentially a separate um, section of the city that's going to be dealing with the waterfront. And we are looking forward to hearing more about that. And we're getting a report from our planning fellow who's been um, assisting us this spring. Um, one question I did have, I noted that the resolutions didn't come through and we've, I'm wondering if that's a change in how we're dealing with uh, seeing resolutions. We didn't get them in our packet. I think for many people, it's a little confusing to have to go back and forth. I hope everyone has had the chance to look at this resolution, these resolutions. Jesus. Our apologies for that. We had a little bit of a computer issue. And so that's why we didn't put together the packet like we normally do. Um, and we heard from one or two people, you're, you're the third, but uh, yeah, we did mention in the email where in the agenda went out that they're all gonna, they're all in the-, um, in the, the reso tracker. Reso tracker. Um, I just think it's really helpful to have them ahead of time. Some of them are, some of these resos are complex and it's just good. I totally understand computer problems. So, so yes, good to yeah, hear it's just good. a one-off. Thank that's, you. that's good feedback to have, but I will say they are available ahead of time. As soon as committees give us the resos, we put them on the reso tracker. And if a committee meets two weeks before full board and their reso is done right away, it goes right up on the reso tracker. As I've mentioned uh, many times um, in my reports um, that the reso tracker is not just for past resolutions, it is also for upcoming resolutions. So all members are encouraged to regularly check the tracker uh, because in the past, the way we would do it when we would wait to do the, the, the packet for the last resolution to get to the office, all the resolutions that had been with us for days and weeks had to wait and everyone had to read them all at once. By putting them up on the tracker as they're ready, people can get a, a head start, a significant head start in reading them. But, um, but thank you for your feedback. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sandra, go ahead. Yeah, just a, a small correct, not correction, I'm sorry, a recommendation. Um, so as soon as I was thinking that perhaps, because it's also a little confusing. So while they're on the tracker, the ballot references like 4A, 4B, 4C, and there's no reference to that anymore. I think it might be helpful since they're in Airtable for us to put a link in the ballot so that you can just click through when you see the ballot to make sure you're actually remembering the, the one that you reviewed because they're not shown in any order that relates to the ballot. Okay, thank you for that, thank you. Thank you, Sandro. All right, so let's move on to Health and Human Services, Elvi. Thank you, Carl. Good evening, everyone. And uh, we have two resolutions that passed our committee. The first one is encouraging the Metropolitan Transportation Authority to equip subway stations, boots, and select bus service buses with NARCA nasal spray kits. Jason is the main person that drafted this uh, resolution, so I give the floor to Jason. Uh, which which Jason Jason are you referring to? Uh, Jason, Jason. Apple, 
Yeah, Jason Frommelitz is not, not with us tonight. He's not here tonight. So. Oh, he's not here tonight. Yeah. But I mean, it's pretty okay. self-explanatory in the, yeah. uh, the yes, it is. Um, But if any, does anyone have any questions or comments on this for a? All right. Oh, yeah, Susan. I was just wondering how, I mean, I think it's a great thing. I just wondered how the kit would be kept safe. In, in other words, that people wouldn't be ripping it off, walking away with it. My um, understanding, LB, right, is that it would be with the operator? Yes, and, and those kits will be installed with safety devices. Okay, thank you, Susan. All right, so seeing no further questions on 4A, I'll end debate there and we'll move to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4A. And while people are doing that, Elvi, do you wanna talk about 4B? Yes, the second RESO is about asking Metropolitan Transit Authority to install a public access automated external defibrillator at each MTA subway station and select bus service stop in Manhattan Community District 6. So it was uh, Kevin and Marty that mainly drafted the RESO. So Kevin, you want to say something about this RESO? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Uh, LV. You know, although AEDs are mandatory for certain venues, including schools and state buildings, there are no outdoor AEDs at MTA locations. Susan, great question that applies to this as well about safety, and we have been having discussions about that. Uh, before this unanimously passed in committee, we added a whereas, and that's because the day before, Senator Schumer and City Council member Krishnan, who is chair of the Parks and Recreation Committee, co-wrote an editorial that calls for more publicly accessible AEDs. Now, in addition, the resolution notes that a nonprofit organization in our community, St. Barton Park Conservancy, is on board to fund a pilot SBS stop uh, for AEDs at or near an M15, at one of the two M15 34th Street stops. Uh, fun, fun fact, the MTA reports that M15 is the bus busiest bus route in the United States. I'll just respond to a question by a committee member about this resolution. Uh, a committee member had asked this before the meeting. Uh, AEDs are there to help all ages and backgrounds. Cardiac arrests, I think we should all know, do not discriminate. As Alvi knows, this has hit close to home this week. Fewer than 48 hours ago, a friend of mine, a former college teammate and sweet mate named Harvey Glantz, died after suffering cardiac arrest and Harvey was no everyday athlete. While a student, he held a 100 meter dash world record and won an Olympic gold medal. Harvey had no history of heart trouble. He was a top coach in good shape. He was simply walking on a track. If this program saves one life, it will be well worth it. And we thank you for your consideration. <coughs> All right, thank you, Kevin, and love and condolences to you and your family and friends uh, for your loss. Um, we'll move on to uh, Marty. Uh, I know you've done some work on this in the past as uh, as chair of the board. Um, so you have the floor. Well, well, well actually, not as chair as chair of the board, as chair of the public safety committee in 1993, um, I had seen a pilot program in Portland, Oregon, where they were putting automatic defibrillators in, in the uh, city's emergency vehicles, police cars, fire trucks, et cetera. And we wrote, a, CB6, we wrote a resolution, CB6 passed it, it passed the city council, Senator, um, and then I was blocking, put $10 million to make it happen throughout the city. CB6 brought AEDs into New York City uh, on a global scale. Uh, <clears throat> the, the idea of this particular resolution came to me when I was in uh, Manchester and Leeds uh, in, in, in early February, where they have these kiosks with the AEDs in public spaces. It, it's not available to everybody. You have to press a button and 
the 911 or their 999 operator comes on immediately and you tell the person what the problem is, they press a button which releases it and they send the, um, the um, emergency vehicles to the spot as well. But this, en this enables the person who is right on the spot to, to get the, get the um, device and immediately apply it to the individual. And it has saved lives um, in other places around the world. If, if you Google uh, AED kiosks, there, there are numerous ones that are available. All right, thank you, Marty. Uh, let's move on to Jim. Yeah, the only the only co two comments. Um, first, I would ask that in addition to this, uh, at some point, the committee take up the notion of of uh, adding both of these uh, improvements to buildings over a certain uh, capacity with a certain number of units. And the second is, uh, please, if we're doing this please include it in your budget priorities uh, so that it's listed as one of them since we're supporting it. Great yeah. point, Jim, thank you. Thank you. All right, are there any further questions on 4B? All right, seeing none, I'll conclude debate there and we'll move this to a vote. Um, so please go back to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4B. And while that's happening, Elvie, do you have a quick report or anything? Yeah, just a short one. So on June 8th, I attended the grand opening of the Behavioral Health Center of Mount Sinai Health System, which is located at 45th Brevington Street. The center is a brand new patient center a one-stop location that offers a full array of services to meet our community's mental health substance use and primary care needs. This is the largest private investment in behavioral health in the history of New York State. And the Mount Sinai Behavioral Health Center valued at 140 million. I uh, just wanna say the services that the center will provide they will provide inpatient services that include inpatient psych hospitalization, inpatient detoxification, and rehabilitation from chemical substances. They have 36 beds of geriatric psych patient, 28 beds for dual diagnosis, eight respite beds, and 51 rehabilitation detox. Second, they have a crisis services for patients that experience mental health crisis but do not need inpatient hospitalization. It's called the intensive crisis residence. Third, they have a subacute intensive outpatient services, which is a short-term psych hospitalization. Fourth, they have an integrated outpatient behavioral health services that is centralized comprehensive integrated outpatient services. They also offer a telebehavioral health and all patients will have the opportunity to participate in research and clinical trials that contribute to the advancement of psychiatric knowledge and care. And uh, we're not gonna have any meeting in July and August and the next time we're meeting is in September. That's all my report. All right, thank you very much, Elvi. All right, we'll move on to our next committee, Youth and Education. John, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, I'll uh, be speaking on other matters later. I waive my report tonight. Okay, thank you very much, John. I will now move on to business affairs and licensing. Claire. Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the new members. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, these were pretty benign. I'm not sure if anyone has a motion. Brian? Motion to bundle. All right, there's a motion. Does anyone second that? Second. Second. Seconded by Jim Collins. Thank you very much. All right, are there any questions on 6A through 6D? 
Seeing none, I'll end debate there and we will move to a vote. Um, so for new members, uh, when we bundle, that means we will vote on all of the resolutions at once. Um, so if you can go back to your digital ballot, everybody please mark your votes for 6A, 6B, 6C, and 6D. And while people are doing that, do you have a report, Claire? Um, no, besides the fact that I'm communicating with Jesus and trying to, um, as I mentioned to the board members, um, uh, waive our appearance at <laughs> the next committee meeting. That's not the right way to say it, but um, hopefully we um, won't have a meeting in June. But if we do, I'm looking forward to seeing you all potentially in person again. Um, that will be exciting. But other than that, have a great summer to folks who I don't see in between. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, so we'll now move on to our joint uh, presentation. Uh, so I don't know who's taking the lead on this, but business affairs, health and human services and youth and education coming together. Um, take it away. Clara, is it okay if I speak or would you rather introduce? Yes, John, please take it away. And thank you for um, doing this while you're under the weather. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, I, and I heard to Claire because this issue ultimately comes under business affairs and licensing when it comes to legal cannabis establishments. I'm just going to speak briefly um, about this. This has been uh, on the board's agenda for some time. It's been raised by uh, concerned members of our community extensively. Uh, I'd like to thank Claire and LB and all of the people on three committees who voted on this uh, unanimously uh, to bring it here tonight. Um, basically, what the resolution does, and I can really get into, and I'm going to use the old con, I get into the weeds on this, but what the resolution does is it urges the Office of Cannabis, Cannabis Management and the Office of the Governor, therefore, uh, to be very, very vigilant about implementing uh, and the, the enforcement of regulations that got through the Assembly and the Senate with the approval of the Governor as part of the budget process. This has been a long and uh, considerably difficult process uh, to, to navigate uh, in Albany. Um, and we have been discussing it, as I said, for some time uh, 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 on our committee and in the board. What I'd like to do, since this has been uh, the subject of discussion in three different committees, uh, clearly invite comments from anyone on the reso, but particularly ask for anyone, any clarifying questions from new members uh, uh, on this particular issue in particular resolution uh, who would not have been familiar or had the chance to attend the three committees where this was discussed. And um, also asked if the board has not yet done so, uh, if office has not yet done so, just when they send out the air table, new members will find you know, my uh, contact information in the air table. Uh, and uh, I invite any of you who wish to discuss this issue in further detail uh, to contact me directly as well. And rather than go on, uh, I'm going to stop there and invite questions. Yield the floor back to the chair. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, are there any questions on 7A? Okay, seeing none, uh, let's close the debate there and we'll move it to a vote. So please go back to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 7A. Okay, and with that, thank you to John, Claire and Elvie for their tireless work as well as to their committees uh, for their tireless work on this as well. Um, and thank you again. All right, so we'll now move on to transportation. Brian, you have the floor. Why, thank you. Um, our first resolution that we're presenting tonight is one 
Well, let me just sum it up. We want a better tracking of noise violations from vehicles in the roadway in the district. And we've presented a resolution that um, both is to extend an existing program and uh, to support a um, an intro before the council that uh, council member powers is sponsoring uh, and that his office came to answer questions about at our last meeting. Um, and it's in the packet and if anybody has any questions i'm right here. All right, thank you, Brian, uh, we have a hand up from Marty Marty go ahead. Yeah, it was um, the, the questions that were arisen earlier in regards to. Um, how, how many false negatives it has. I know I live on 57th Street. When the bridge gets backed up, there, there are cars here and there that are honking, but it's all backed up. The, <clears throat> unless there's a light on top of a car that indicates that that, that car is actually honking, there's almost no way to know which car is actually doing the noise and by all by the bridges and tunnels there's the big signs you know uh honking is a 350 dollars fine and all of that but it, it's rarely enforced unless it's you know just two cars at a light and one guy is honking the other guy to move th th then then there's possibility possibility but to um how effective is this i mean you know, our encouragement is for them to be more effective. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, some of us live near uh, very busy intersections of the city that have a lot of uh, congestion. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes the horns start going off and they don't stop. And, you know, it's clearly illegal and it needs to be enforced. And, uh, you know, particularly around um, the uh, Queens Midtown Tunnel, we've heard complaints for years that it's a daily occurrence that the horns are honking and that um that calls to the police over it have uh been met with uh refusal to issue any summonses uh perhaps their refusal is actually based in sound legal theory about a police officer needing to witness the act personally so they would need to walk the streets and like look directly at the car and see them honking and identify it and testify in court of such a thing. Um, uh, you know, we're we're trying to make an attempt to do what uh, other cities and other jurisdictions have led on in this. Plus, um, you know, uh, uh, utilizing some of the technology that we have from other programs to further that uh, to essentially try to get a hold of the problem, because again, it is a serious problem uh, and it doesn't accomplish anything. Like we're not talking about something where, uh, you know, they're honking in traffic in order to prevent a catastrophe or that they're honking actually helps reduce traffic congestion. So it's, you know, a complicated, you know, net benefit. It is simply just a wasteful, spiteful activity. Um, I mean, I would love it if many of the drivers who commute into the city realized this and you know took the logic on it and uh decided to cease the behavior on their own but they probably will not and uh, we uh i think we should uh look into these novel enforcement uh strategies uh but the committee does too the committee uh voted on this one seven in favor unanimous support for it great thank you brian i see a hand from sandy sandy go ahead um, I think this is a great idea. I totally support it. I wonder if we could also address the noise from police cars and from fire engines that, um, you know, they're extremely loud, extremely aggressive, and just wonder sometimes if we can also deal with that. But totally support this. think it's a great solution, you know, great proposal. I appreciate the support from a former transportation chair. Um, I, uh, I think uh, to the angle that we didn't address specifically um, emergency responder vehicles or city agency vehicles making noise or reporting to things, um, we can discuss that at committee as a separate matter. I don't think that this touched necessarily into these specific uh, enforcement things, especially because I don't think it's appropriate for a photo monitoring device to be catching fire trucks on their license plate because they were making noise. I think that that's gonna, I think even if that sort of thing happens that 
program's going to have to filter out anything it flags as a violation. So what we're all going to have to do is something, discuss something that's a little bit uh, better targeted toward that. And I agree. I think, you know, again, it, there's, I've seen personally a lot of instances with emergency vehicles making a, like a, a violent uh, injury causing amount of noise around pedestrians and around, uh, you know, heavy uh, bystander traffic only to get nowhere with it because it doesn't really make a difference into what they're doing. Um, there are a few instances where that is um, not true and that they do have to use the horns, but I feel like that they just do it by default. Like they just go down streets that are totally open and available and just keep, you know, blaring whatever. So, um, uh, Mariam, you have your hand up. I'll recognize you. Thank you. Um, I'm also a huge fan because I live right by the Midtown Tunnel exit and it's gotten worse the past year. Um, and I've been here for almost seven years now. Uh, the question is around semantics. So I noticed that it said cars and there are a lot of vans coming in. There are a lot of trucks coming in. Um, I do see that the resolution also says motor vehicles. So again, just back to semantics, are we just targeting cars or all motor vehicles outside of the, the emergency ones Sandy mentioned? Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's meant for motor vehicles, and if there's any references of cars in there, we can uh, modify the language. It's not it's not material to the meaning of the resolution, especially because um, looking at um, the resolves and no, there's no uh, mention of cars in the results. That has to be text change. Changing a whereas should be a trivial matter. So we'll we'll take a look at that. Um, Brendan, take a note of that. Um, and I'll yeah, take a note said, of let's it be too. consistent with our language. Let's uh, keep it. To yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, it says cars in the title. I'll I'll make sure to change any place where it says cars to vehicles, motor vehicles. to motor motor vehicles. All right. Uh, Taking Stu, a note of that. Go ahead, Stu. You have the floor. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. Um, I'm I'm going to vote in favor of this with with, but I have reservations as I've expressed before. Um, you know, quality of life issues are often um, demeaned as as not as trivial, and they're not. I mean, quality of life is quality of life. So this is this is important. Um, it would be bad if it turns out that these devices are not accurate and they often um, issue summonses or, or are responsible for summonses to people who are not responsible for for violations. So, um, you know, it's it's it would be nice if along with the legislation, we got some answers before before we voted on these things on what tests have been done and what, you know, how accurate they are, but I'm, I'm willing to vote on it now and, you know, hope that the testing that's been done has been responsible. And yes, I, I know that there's supposed to be annual calibration, but we don't know what they're calibrating to. And we don't know that the calibration means it will be accurate. So, um, so looking forward, I would like to know that we get more information before we vote on this sort of uh, uh, resolution. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's um, mm -hmm. the the resolution is implicitly conditional on accuracy. Um, if we uh, were in the presence of uh, a program that was implemented that was widely wide, widely inaccurate and and not just uh, you know minimally inaccurate, uh, we would revisit that discussion. Okay, uh, Gabe. Uh, thank you. I, I just wanted to point out, um, just a nitpicking here a little bit, but it's not just quality of life. These are actually public health concerns above a certain decibel. It's, you know, heart disease, stress levels. This is, uh, it goes beyond mere quality of life. Uh, there are pretty substantial um, population-wise health effects to these unnecessary sounds. Thank you for that distinction, Gabe. That's important. Thank you. All right. Are there any further questions on 8A? All right, seeing none, we'll conclude debate and we'll move to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 8A. Okay, more people are doing that. Brian, do you wanna talk about 8B? Okay, 8B. So the genesis of this was that I tasked the committee with considering potential solutions to a range of issues related to bicycles, 
electronic devices that were generally regarded as bicycles or, or useful in the bike lanes under uh, state motor vehicle law and traffic law. Um, it was a discussion also that um, involved mopeds, which whether they're gas powered or whether they're electric powered are distinct from bicycles in motor vehicle law, but they were using the bike lanes, but there are also safety concerns about them in general traffic. Um, to fold all that together and consider various access issues, I uh, uh, created a task group to work offline for two months um, to coordinate together and to come back to the committee with some research suggestions. Um, that group, which was Majed, uh, Jason, and Matt, came back to us with uh, these recommendations um, in a resolution. Uh, the committee voted uh, unanimously for it. Um, we are um, essentially, without uh, doing a very specific redraw of the streets uh, to separate traffic, we're asking um, the city to take some uh, reasonable safety precautions uh, or and uh, and to ask uh, road users to take those precautions as well um this doesn't uh support any additional law around uh the matter uh it does suggest adding signage uh education campaigns uh research to potentially uh drive further changes um and perhaps design changes which we believe a lot in um, and also there's a measure in here to expand the width of protected bike lanes and bike paths where possible to allow for safer passing. Something that DOT seems to be in the process of doing anyway and has spoken with us informally about interest in it. So it is coming down the pipe anyway, but it's good that it's in the resolution that we can ask for it, um, at least from the committee's perspective. Um, we're also attempting to address some of the things that have emerged now that the delivery business in the city is a little bit different than what it used to be uh, with apps uh, uh, hiring most of the uh, delivery workers as contractors and that uh, the laws that were applying to direct employees of the businesses are now sort of being circumvented by this uh, setup. Um, so we uh, so we put some measures in in there on that. This is by no means the end of this discussion, but uh, this is our start in uh, discussing this in a uh, constructive and productive manner. Uh, as much as people may chime in with reports of times when uh, a road user has irresponsibly passed by them, um, I should note that this is a situation where there were there is an estimated uh, 10 to 11 million deliveries in our community board alone each year um, as per uh, some stats that came out recently. So, um, you know, this is something where it's not just here and we have to deal with it, but it is also something that um, the residents of the district are really engaging in as, as recipients and producers of these deliveries. So uh, rather than demonize them, we want to normalize them in a way that keeps helps keep people safe. Um, and we hope that this is a step forward with that. All right, thank you, Brian. We have a question from Sandy. <clears throat> um, I just noticed that the second resolve deals with delivery people. And I wonder if it shouldn't be for all um, motorized or um, vehicles, not just delivery that they required to take a safety course, that type of, the same issues that you're talking about for delivery people. I think we have the uh, board office pull up the resolution so that we all know what we're talking about. Sure, just and give us. Um... Yeah, and I think that that was more of a sense of um, that we were looking specifically at the delivery workers as a potential targetable group because they're working for the companies and their employee rosters and their contractor rosters. So they're already very reachable where the audience of uh, people who can legally ride a bike in New York is pretty much the entire population of the state. So um, so there's a little bit of reachability with that. Um, I also think that um, there wasn't this impression that um, that we were when we were dealing with when we were writing this up that um, that a lot of the danger was coming from people who are using um, e-powered vehicles um, on their own. Of course, it is certainly possible and there needs to be enforcement around that. 
Um, but it does seem to have stuck out as a problem that there are a lot of uh, time pressured uh, food delivery workers out there on the streets contributing the bulk of vehicle miles traveled in the district. Um, so we would certainly want to address that first um, with this kind of uh, uh, with this kind of effort. So that's that's why it's specifically um, looking at delivery workers. We, you just might want to think of expanding that somehow to all people using mobility. That's so just a recommendation. Maybe it's the next resume. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marty, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> where it indicates insofar as uh, education and communications, it should be in appropriate languages. It should be noted that CB6 has had several resolutions in regards to uh, deliver, delivery people on bicycles. And in fact, in, and I can't remember exactly when, in the late 90s, we prepared a, uh, a pamphlet that was in Spanish and Chinese and Korean, which may be somewhere in the coffers of the of the board office, that was also in picture that was in picture form, that was distributed to the various restaurants that were in CB six at the time. Yeah, and again, this um, this is supposed to move forward or uh, reinforce all prior efforts at this. Um, as uh, you know, uh, uh, this this is a thing that, as the situation changes, there are different angles to it. There's obviously a different audience, and uh, some of the existing work that we've done in the past eight years uh, has been uh, slightly obsoleted by the new worker models. Um, you know, and uh, you know, this was one of the conversations that we actually had in drafting this up. It's like, you know, do we want to talk about whether uh, the delivery workers should be standardized as full-time workers, or should they be more regarded as workers for the businesses when they're delivering the food? And we're like, you know, this is a matter of, you know, U.S. and state law, and we're just going to have to move something before those people move on it, because that stuff's going to take forever to evolve. So uh, this is an attempt to try to adapt to the situation that we're in. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jerry, you have the floor. Howdy all, as a new member, I, I hope I'm not out of order. Just an observation, with uh, 48, the, the uh, suggestion for safety courses, just some thinking that this could evolve to a safety record where there is a grading system and incentives towards safety, as opposed to the negative incentives for speed. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and so there's two angles to that. One is that, um, uh, is there going to be something like a state uh, supervised point system or whatnot, like the way there is with motor vehicles that could apply to uh, businesses without being too heavy handed or without uh, creating a dragnet style, uh, you know, enforcement uh, to uh, try to rack this stuff up. Um, so we didn't quite get there with it. Um, again, you know, once you get a ticket in the state of New York currently for a road violation on a bicycle, it's not it's not an ongoing thing. It's not a cumulative thing. It's, you know, a once off ticket. I think that to some extent with a standard bicycle, that's appropriate. The line's a little bit blurred if you're carrying the extra weight of a battery and you're going 25 miles an hour. Um, so stay tuned on that. As far as, you know, food delivery workers having a required safety course, it was, I think it was thought of in the same vein as having a sort of, um, uh, courses on like HR matters, otherwise like, you know, anti-harassment in the workplace, which, uh, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff that uh, a lot of workers are given as standard uh, instructional material. So that's pretty much what is meant with that. Um, and I, I hope that that sort of comes through uh, with the resolution. All right, thank you very much. Uh, are there any further questions? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll close debate on this uh, and move to our digital ballot and mark our vote on 8B. And let's move on to 8C. Okay, let's try to get everybody out of here by nine o'clock. Um, this one's real simple. Um, DOT is reconfiguring the bike a facility on uh, or the traffic facility on 54th Street to connect to First Avenue, 
going, I think, uh, I think 50 is 54th, the westbound one or the eastbound one? I think it's the eastbound one. Um, and they're also uh, building a protected bike lane connector on Sutton Place to connect the exit from the Greenway there to the existing bike lane on 55th Street. Okay, I see a hand from Letty. Yeah, um, I, I, if for the record, I'm going to abstain because I don't know enough about it. I will say that um, the DOT did not reach out to the community, and but that's okay because thanks to the office, they did notify DOT and the group that uh, I am a member of, the Sutton Place Parks Conservancy, does now have a briefing that has been scheduled. But until that, I'm going to abstain. I have no objection. I'm just going to abstain. And I thank the committee for their work. Uh, and just to clarify, DOT did visit with each of the building uh, they association didn't. groups. They did not. Um, along the corridor. Um, we have asked them not. to reach they out to in other individual groups in terms Brian, of they conservancies. Did not. They did not. But that's okay. I mean, we're getting a briefing, and we'll know more about it. We and we don't we don't object, but we would just like to know what's going on in our community. Not your fault, and I thank you for the work that you're doing. Okay, thank you very much. All right, seeing no further questions on this uh, item, I'll end debate here, and we'll move to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for eight C. And while that's going on, let's talk 8D. So um, NYU needs to replace their in-building PET scanner at the building at 38th and 1st on the southeast corner. Um, while they are doing uh, the disconnect and the power upgrades, they need to install one that's in the curb zone on the street and have an enclosed walkway leading from the building to the scanner it is going to be used by cancer patients who are immunocompromised. Um, they don't want people in hospital gowns, obviously, walking on the street to get to the remote PET scanner. Um, there has been some stuff in the past with NYU having external facilities in this space. It was there for a very long time while they were making very significant building upgrades. Um, in this particular case, they are uh, estimating only a six to eight week construction time. Um, the committee had no objection in this, uh, the resolution uh, voted unanimously eight in favor. Okay, are there any questions on 8D? All right, seeing none, we'll end debate there and move to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 8D. And while people are doing that, Brian, do you have any additional report? I waive my report. Have a good summer, people. Thank you. All right, let's move on to housing and homelessness. Rich. Sorry, um, I waive my report. Okay, thank you very much, Rich. We'll move on to environment and parks. Neil. Hi, good evening, Kyle. Uh, just to, I got some notes here. So first off, we had a fantastic meeting. It has been a great year with environment and parks and um, I would note that one thing that we did discuss, there will be uh, the placement of a sculpture at Dag Hamishol, um Plaza. This will be installed in the fall. Um, other activities that were that occurred or went on in uh, one second in the district was my parks events. We had one at Stuyvesant Square on the the East Park as well as the West Park and. We also had an event at Ralph Bunch. Um, I would like to thank um, Therese Flores of the Parks Department for participating in these events. Um, Therese Flores is a manager of um, parks in Manhattan. Uh, let's see what else. Dag Hamishol Plaza, they also separated, they also celebrated Catherine Hepburn's birthday. Uh, we just know that Miss Hepburn lived in our district she also won four Academy Awards, and some of her movies that I would suggest would be The African Queen with Humphrey Bogart, 
guess who's coming to dinner with Sidney Portier and one Golden Pond with Henry Fonda. So have a look at those. Um, upcoming events. We have Tango in the Park. That is at Sutton Place. And it is from 4 to 5.30. It is on every Wednesday for the rest of the month. And also on the last Thursday of the month. I would also like to note and recognize uh, Marty Barrett and his contribution to the reopening of Stuyvesant Cove Park, which uh, recently happened, which is fantastic. So thank you, Marty, for your work. And also... I would like to say to the new board members, I invite you all to come to our September meeting. Um, you know, we have a lot of fun and you can learn more about our great parks in the district. I would also like to thank Sheena Kaufman, who she and her staff work very diligently to take care of our parks in the district. I would also like to thank the Stuyvesant Square Park Association, Stuyvesant Park Gardeners, Friends of Ralph Bunch Park, Friends of Dag Hamishold Plaza, St. Barton Conservancy, and the Sutton Place Conservancy for all of the work that they do to ensure that we have nice parks in our district. Um, finally, I would say to everyone, new members and all members of the board, please feel free to contact me over the summer. I'm always happy to discuss anything related to parks or any uh, issues that we could possibly address. And that is all. Thank you. Have a great summer. All right. Thank you very much, Neil. I see a hand up from Matt Weintraub. Matt, go ahead. Hi, Matt. Just a quick question. Um, are there yes. any updates on Bellevue South? Because it was I know it was scheduled to open in May. And I know I've seen a lot of great work being done there. I was just wondering if there's any revised date for the opening. Um, I don't have the exact date. What I can do, I can reach out to Sheena Kaufman and get um, uh, an exact date. I know it's supposed to be happening soon, but um, yeah, I can definitely do that. And so if you want to shoot me an email that I can contact her and give you an exact date. And then once we have one, um, maybe we could possibly attend together if there's a reopening, if you're available. So it's almost summer vacation, right? <laughs> awesome. All right, we, we put the date in the newsletter, by the way. Um, it mm -hmm. is uh, June 21st at 1 p.m. So okay. new members, please read that newsletter. It's very, very informative. <laughs> <laughs> yes, noted. And just a quick edit, don't forget the Philadelphia story uh, as part of your Hepburn uh, homework. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to our last item uh, from the executive committee and I'll turn that over uh, to John. Thank you, Kyle, and I recognize uh, that it is difficult to be speaking at um, after nine o'clock when several people have mentioned the hour and the onset of summer, but I, I do think it's important to get this uh, matter on the table for further discussion at our September meeting, and I will therefore bypass my opportunity to tell uh, my Catherine Hepburn story, which I will save for private conversation if anyone wants to hear it. So um, just to provide context, um, and do we have this uh, uh, draft reso, which and it's just a draft uh, up so people can see it? Okay. Um, so just to provide some context for this to uh, other board members, uh, especially the new members, uh, after uh, the board passed their updated bylaws uh, earlier uh, this year, bylaws chair B. Disman, who is unfortunately not here this evening, referred a couple of items to the executive committee for discussion last month. And one of those items was the topic of term length for board officers. And since there had been su suggestions for both shortening them and lengthening them. So at the May Executive Committee, I proposed that we lengthen the term length eligibility for board officers. And I did that for three main reasons. First, the, uh, the board should be empowered, the board should be empowered with the ability to choose new or continuing leadership. Uh, this is good practice since it's good for democratic process. 
Second, board officers are tasked with working with electeds, government agencies, heads of a lot of institutions to improve the district. And as we all know, uh, due to government process, bureaucracy, complexity, and just how long it takes us time to get some things done, political will, many critical issues take longer than three years to address sufficiently. And our elected officials either don't have term limits or have term limits that are longer than our board officers, putting them in a position to address uh, their, the issues they regard as important sufficiently. And third, we recently voted on updated bylaws that continue to allow committee chairs who are subject to appointment and not to democratic elected process to serve for up to five years. So this is a progressive proposal that makes board officer eligibility the same as committee chair eligibility, except the board officers have to face election each year. It seems silly or that we are comfortable with five-year terms for our committee chairs but not for our board officers eligibility. And I just want to address uh, one, any confusion or misinformation that might be out there. Uh, this resolution does not or would not get rid of term limits. It allows our board officers to be eligible for additional terms, but elections still have to take place every year. Uh, to put this in context, some boards have shorter term eligibility, others have no term limits whatsoever. And currently we're at the shorter end of the spectrum and this proposal brings us closer to the middle. There's a false argument that shorter terms lead to broader leadership, but this hasn't been the case for CB6. Over the past few years, we've struggled to find candidates for board officer positions. And I've been fortunate that people like Mark and Sandro who served as previous chairs, as well as B who previously served as a board officer offered themselves as candidates when no one else stood up for a position. So rather than turnover for the sake of turnover, our board should be empowered. This suggests to choose whether or not we want to continue with our board officers, or if we want to choose new ones through a democratic process that is by voting for or against them. And finally, this is not unprecedented. Our board previously voted to expand term limits from two years to three for many of the same reasons that I've raised here this evening. Uh, at the time that was controversial, but now it's viewed as uh, the norm. So thank you for your attention, especially at this late hour. And I yield the floor back to the chair. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, and just before we jump into uh, comments from board officer, or sorry, board officers from board members, uh, just want to kind of uh, clarify the process going forward. Um, so because this was referred by the bylaws committee to the executive committee, um, this is being brought to the full board and must be discussed at not only this meeting, but at our September meeting. Um, so no motion should be made to be voting on anything at tonight's meeting. This is um, a discussion. Um, and I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that we will be discussing it at this meeting and at our September meeting. So I just want to clarify that for everybody. Uh, and we'll start with Sandy. Uh, Actually, on... Marty had his hand up first. I, oh, I uh, defer to uh, Marty. Marty, go ahead. OK, here's the other side of the story. Uh, when I was board chair, there was a two term limit. And <clears throat> only in the middle of my second term did I realize what I was doing and how to do it. And so when my term was over and I chaired the new bylaws committee, I've chaired three of them, by the way, and I attended the fourth. Um, at that time, we ex we gave a third board, uh, a third possible term for the, uh, for the uh, board chair. Also at, uh, at up to that time, committee chairs were unlimited. A, a committee chair could be there for lifetime. And there was a, a couple who had been chairs for 20 years. The, the whole idea of putting term limits was we had and have very talented people on this board. We have individuals who come on who in their first year, they're, they're not quite sure what they're, what, what's going on. In the second year, they're, they're getting better and better. And by limiting committee chairs to five years, it gave a, a greater 
ability for more individuals to take leadership roles. And once you're a committee chair, then the, uh, a, an easy step up is becoming an officer. Uh, extending the uh, terms for individuals will limit the ability of individuals to become officers. Um, I, I'm, I've been offered to chair committees after I was board chair, which I've turned down. And, I, and even though I like Mark and Sherrod, I voted against them when they uh, ran again for, 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 uh, board, for uh, board officers, because I don't believe board chairs should continue their leadership. They should mentor leaders. They should help the committees. But uh, we're, we're a community, and the whole idea of, of the board is to build leadership, and by extending um, terms, we're not doing it. Okay. Could I comment? Or why, I'm happy uh, sure. Or... I'll, I'll let you have a response. You know, I mean, I, I basically, this does not suggest that we extend, you know, term uh, limits for uh, committee chairs. It basically asks that the eligibility for board officers be extended because there's a learning process uh, there as well. And, um, but but I, I take your points, uh, Mark. Thank you. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, move to Sandy. I, I completely agree with what Marty said. And um, this was a very close vote at exec. And I wanted to note that there was only one of the current officers that actually voted for this. So um, even Mark and Sandro voted against this. I think they realized that we need to encourage people to come and take these positions. We're all term limited now for eight years. If we have someone taking one position for five years, it's it's really not fair to the rest of the community. And I think it will really alter who wants to join our board if we do this. Um, my speculation is that other boards will start to lower their, their number of years that they will have people in these positions as we start to grow accustomed to being in only an eight year term. Um, <clears throat> I also um, think this that unfortunately, um, we, uh, the election is, is a very difficult thing. Sometimes when people come on, the only people they know are the officers. They don't know anyone else on the board until they've been on the board for more than a year or so. So it's really um, doesn't tend to be a, um, an easy way to select your leadership, the way the system is set now. And um, I encourage everyone to think about this over the summer. We have another chance to discuss it in the fall. Um, but I would reach out to other members, of, especially to the new members, and, and try and, and see other people's opinion on this. Thank you. Yeah, I'll hold comments till the end, but uh, you, make, you make several good points, Sandy. Um, thank you. Okay, um, let's go to Anne next. I could say, I think, I think Claire was on before me so i'm just i'm following the order as it appears go Anne. ahead and okay. it's okay uh, okay yeah. um well part of what i have to say is echoing you know what both marty and sandy said and i think we should acknowledge sort of the power of incumbency um especially with we're going to have more turnover in board members um because of our our term limits uh, but I also, my some of my concerns about this reso are also about like, when we voted on the bylaws changes, we voted as a package. So I'm a little bit concerned about the idea of making a change. Um, like we voted, like we didn't get a chance at, you know, when we voted on the bylaws changes to vote you know, we didn't get a chance to choose. Yes, we want this change. No, we want, don't want that change. And I feel like this is kind of taking another bite at the apple um, kind of thing. So that's that's um, a, a, another uh, concern for me. Um, I also feel like... I'll, I'll stop there. I 
there's enough other people speaking. Right. Or wanting to speak. And, and just to, just to clarify for procedure, um, B as the bylaws chair had referred it to executive committee for further discussion. Um, the understanding is that there were comments to shorten the, the term limits as well as extend them. And she felt that it was worth uh, further discussion by the executive committee rather than holding up a vote on the rest of the um, of the bylaws uh, that we passed uh, earlier this year. So that's how well, this, uh, all, yeah, I, this, I, this all started. I was at some, I mean, I was at many of those meetings and, you know, I had that discussion with her as well. And I just feel like it's like, well, we voted on, you know, 47 changes and, you know, this one came up at the last meeting and it, it does seem out yeah. of sync. So yeah. To so have then, a vote on think, one other one. Yeah. So again, specific just change. Pages. And and she's not here to talk about that distinction. So I mean so, you can look um and you can look at the April executive committee meeting. All of our meetings are recorded. I absolutely have done that. So she referred it so then you know that she referred it to the executive committee for discussion in May. That and is what the, I'm saying is I am not sure finish, that's and, I'm not sure that's and appropriate. Let me finish. Since and, we just voted on finish, a package. You're out of order. You're out of order. I'm trying to explain to you a procedure that you don't clearly understand. And I'm just trying to provide information on that so that we're all aware of what the procedure is. She referred it to executive committee. The executive committee discussed it at the following meeting. That was how this came up. The and, executive and, committee and, discussed it. There was a vote taken. And now it is being brought up at full board that it will be discussed at this meeting and in the September meeting. That's the correct. Procedure. Right. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. What I'm saying is that it seems it seems inappropriate that since we just vote, like I feel like I could go back next month and say, hey, you know, I think we should have made this change in the bylaws and, and maybe and that'll you, come and, up. And you could, but you would have to get well, maybe, but to maybe make it to make it shouldn't. So, but okay, but then you have to persuade people. That's how democracy works. That was the vote that mm -hmm. was taken. So the vote that was taken moved it to a discussion at full board. So if the full board wants to discuss it, the full board can vote however it wants to vote on it. That's all right, but that's the procedure. Uh, Susan, go ahead. Uh, you're on mute, Susan. I wanted to, to just say that others had their hand up before me. Claire had her hand up, Jim and Eric Goldberg had his hand up. So I, I think these people should have their chance before okay. me. Eric, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Kyle. Um, I think this is a really difficult situation um, and I'm not sure why we're addressing it now. And the reason it's difficult is because there's really no way to divorce this conversation of the merits of term limits from bluntly the implications of the chair staying in office beyond the current term. And um, I think this would be a very different discussion if it was clear that the current chair wasn't looking to extend his term in office. And then we could have um, a conversation about the merits of term limits but it just begs the question of why are we having this conversation now? We just went through a bylaws revision and it feels like out of nowhere at the last minute, we're having a conversation about extending terms. And I think just from the basics of good governance, it's making CB6 look very silly and immature as an organization. Um, and you hear the tension rising on this call um, and it's going to continue through the summer and beyond because we can't divorce these two items between extending term limits and talking about the merits that John's talking about and, um, and the implication that people are trying to remain in office past their term. And I think that's something that we're going to have to grapple with as we think about how we want to keep CB6 together as a community if we want to have this struggle. Um, it feels like this is not the right way to go for the organization, um, not the right way to go for our community. And I have no understanding for why we're having this conversation now um, and why this is imperative 
for us to discuss extending term limits in June and extending term limits for current officers. If we really think that this is something that is um, important, let's do it for the next set of officers. Um, and, um, and that's it. All right, thank you, Eric, for your comments. And uh, I would just caution you to, to, to be careful with the accusations that you are implicating. Um, as I explained earlier, and as I've explained to you several times through emails, the same process that I highlighted earlier, this was referred to us by the bylaws committee. You can ask the bylaws chair why they chose to refer it to the executive committee. Um, that's all I can tell you as to how the process has gone. It was then voted on. There was a discussion for both sides and it was the vote prevailed to have this discussion at full board. So, Kyle, oh no, you're, uh, Eric, Kyle, I, you're, I you're, you're, Eric, you're speaking Eric, and shouting over Eric, people tonight, cutting down Eric, people's ability to order. speak. You, Eric, Kyle, you're spending your today. evening. You're spending your Eric, evening you're shouting order. people Board down. Office, can we move? And that, can and that is something that you can do, Kyle. You could shout people Eric, down. Can we, can we mute Eric? Because he's out of order. Thank you very much. Um, I've explained this process several times. I've explained it several times tonight. Again, I'm cautioning you to not make this personal. This is a board issue. It was brought up because the bylaws were passed just the other month. And the bylaws chair referred two specific topics to us for further discussion, both of which were discussed. So again, let's keep it professional. You have personal issues. You're able to vote on those personal, personal issues when it comes to it. Um, let's move on to Susan. I just wanted to point out that it's the language there is to be eligible for up to five one-year terms, which means that an officer is certainly free to decide not to run again. And the board members are certainly free not to vote for that person again. All it's saying is that they're eligible, not that they're a shoe in not that they have you know, five years at their disposal, simply that they're eligible. Thank you. All right, thank you, Susan. Uh, Jim, you have the floor. <laughs> Jim, you're on mute. All right. I opposed term limits when they were first implemented. Uh, we have term limits every year that call, or they're called elections, and we should just leave it at that. That said, uh, I think given the fact that we will be discussing this again in September, that this is discussion is becoming dilatory, and uh, I would therefore move that we move the agenda as long as soon as whoever the next speaker is concludes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's go to- Is there a second for that? And I would ask a second. A, Jim, uh, Claire's had her hand up the entire night. So let's uh, go to her and then- that's, we'll what I'm, that's what I'm end, talking about. And then we'll end debate there. And we'll move it to September. Yes, without um, belonging this, I you know was gonna mention what Susan mentioned. These are five one-year term limits. So it's not like extending anyone's um, term, you get to vote. And if you are a new member who wants to run for board officer, you're able to do that. I also wanna um, just you know reiterate the learning curve and the time it takes to settle into a position. I really never understood why board officers um, we're at three one-year terms when committee chairs had five-year terms. Um, it's really inconsistent and that never um, made sense to me. So without um, kind of extending this conversation more, especially because uh, we're going to be talking about it again, um, I would just say that I am in favor of this at this time, just to kind of keep things consistent and give uh, leaders time to settle and get their footing in um, when they do. Okay, thank you very much, Claire. Uh, so we'll end it with that and we'll move to older new business. So I won't have an opportunity to speak? Uh, no. 
Thank you, Kyle. Again, your leadership is fantastic. You're out of order. Thanks, Kyle. We're now moving to older new business. So board members, if you have older new business to state, please raise your hand to resume. Okay, so we'll now conduct the second roll call. I, I have new business, Kyle. Oh, I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. All right. Um, and this was reported today in Crance. Uh, the city of yes that we just voted on includes a, a provision or well, apparently the mayor is working to include a provision to make it easier to to create zoning friendly for uh, the location of casinos, which we have been on record as opposing. So I just wanted to bring that to the boards and the uh, board staff. I'm sorry, Jim. Jim, could you just repeat? And also, what? I'm sorry. I just do you repeat. Yes, cranes. Cranes uh, reported today, this afternoon, I think it was, that um, the city of Yes is being used to implement zoning changes to uh, make the city more business friendly, but also to, to make it easier for the location of casinos. And given that we are opposed to that, um, at least within, within the district uh, so far that I know of, um, I think we should all be alert for developments over the summer. The city has a notorious, uh, notorious history of going ahead and making changes or trying to make changes, get them all ahead. And then uh, we, we don't generally have time to respond. So we should be alert uh, for whatever is coming down the pipe. This apparently is something that the, just came up at a, at a uh, I, I guess it was a city planning commission meeting on Tuesday. So we should all be alert and keep our, keep our uh, antenna up. That's it. All right. Thank you, Jim. Let's move to the second. I role. sent, oh, I'm sorry. I sent the uh, article to you and, and yes, the land that. use chair, et cetera. Yep. Okay, bye. Thank you. All right, so we'll move to our second roll call. And just as a reminder to everyone, if you have not yet hit submit on your ballot, please do so now. Uh, and we'll begin with the second roll. Hey members, I will now call on you for the second roll call. If you have not submitted your ballot, please do so now. Uh, if you're unable to use the digital ballot, I will ask you for your vote on each of tonight's resolution. I think we got Big Letty Simon. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I will vote um, uh, for all of the resolutions. With the exception of 8C, I will abstain on that one. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, the office will record that momentarily. Okay. Thank you. And with that, I'll start the second roll call. Uh, haters Zaidi. Yep, still here. Okay. Mara Wong. Present. Matthew Weintraub. Present. Jerry Weinstein. Present. Brian Van Nuvenhoven. Present. Gabriel Terzo. Present. Mark, Tar Mark Thompson. Present. Susan Steinberg. Present. Anna Singleman. Present. Letty Simon. Present. Have a nice summer, everybody. Aisha Siddiqui. He was not able to be here tonight. Okay. Uh, Olivia Shrednick. Present. Sandra Sherrod. Present. Happy Pride and having a great summer. And Selegman. Here. Larry Shire. Present. Roberto Ruiz Melendez. He was not able to join us tonight. Matt Roberts. Present. Miriam Ralph. Present. Stephen Perez. Present. Rashma Patel. Present. Kevin O'Keefe. Present. Hope to see you this summer a lot of people. Rajesh Nayar. 
Richard Mintz. Present. Sandra McKee. Present and see you at land use. Anton Molnar. Present. David Lowenstein. Present. Jason Littman. Present. Sandra Leftoff. Abigail Cruzmark. Present. Nadine Kalani, please, out. John Keller. Present. Rupal Kakad. Kakad, present. Kakad. <laughs> Forgive me. I have no worries. It's not easy, so no worries. Hayes Judge, I believe, is out. No, I'm and, present. I'm oh. present. You didn't, I, I had difficulty. I called Brian and he put me on. Okay. I came in like right at the beginning, but it was, I wasn't in when you did the roll call. I will mark you as presence. Yeah, have a good summer, those who don't have meetings. Gerald, Gerald Jones, I believe, is out. Eric Goldberg. Present. Okay. Jason Fromwitz. Eric, we need your ballot. I wasn't here for um, the discussion, so I'm not voting tonight. Okay. Jason Fromowitz could not be with us tonight. Uh, that's correct. Beatrice is also unable to join us. Michael Devereaux. Michael Devereaux? Present. Sorry, present. Oh, okay. Marking you as present. Stu Desser. Present. Jonathan Derrico. Present. Take care, everyone. Jim Collins. Present. Happy Flag Day. Happy anniversary. 248 years of the U.S. Army. Blair Brennan. Here. And happy and Pride. Hungry. Happy Pride. Uh, Pride, but happy summer, everyone. Okay. LV Barroso. Present. Great summer, everyone. Martin Barrett. Present and see you all at the Stycove Concert Series. Neil Barclay. Present. Kyle Thide. Present. Josias Apu. Apu. Present. Ajed Abdul Samad. Present. Okay. Now going through the votes for resolution 1A. That is 37 in favor, one opposed, two abstained, zero not entitled. With 37 in favor, that resolution passes. Uh, resolution 2A, 37 in favor, one opposed, two abstained, zero not entitled. With 37 in favor, that resolution passes. Resolution 3A, 36 in favor, one opposed, three abstained, Zero not entitled. That resolution passes with 36 in favor. Resolution 3B, 36 in favor, two opposed, two abstained, zero not entitled. That resolution passes. 36 votes in favor. The resolution 4A, that's 37 in favor, zero opposed, two abstained, one not entitled. 37 votes in favor. That resolution passes. Resolution 4B, 38 in favor, zero opposed, one abstained, one not entitled. 38 in favor, that resolution passes. Resolution 6A, 38 in favor, zero opposed, two abstained, one not entitled. 38 votes in favor, that resolution passes. Resolution 6B, 38 in favor, zero opposed, two abstained, zero not entitled. Uh, with 38 votes in favor, that resolution passes. Resolution 6C, 38 in favor, zero opposed, two abstain, zero, zero not entitled. With 38 votes in favor, that resolution passes. 6D, 38 in favor, zero opposed, two abstain, zero not entitled. With 38 votes, that resolution passes. Uh, joint resolution 7A, 39 in favor, one opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. 39 votes, that resolution passes. 38 in favor, one opposed, one abstained, zero not entitled. With 38 votes, that resolution passes. Transportation 8, resolution 8B, uh, 38 in favor, zero opposed, one abstained, one not entitled. 38 votes, that 
resolution passes. Resolution 8C, 35 in favor, zero opposed, four abstained, one not entitled. With 35 votes in favor, that resolution passes. 8D, 37 in favor, zero opposed, one abstained, two not entitled. With 37 in votes in favor, that resolution passes. And that rounds out the votes for tonight. Okay, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, we're now uh, at adjournment. If there are no objections, we will adjourn the meeting. Seeing no further uh, business, the meeting is adjourned at 9.36 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for a long fireworks for the meeting. I uh, hope everyone enjoys their summer uh, and hope to see everyone around the neighborhood. Bye, All right, have a good if summer, you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.